What's up everybody? Welcome back to FNG Academy. I just had a quick announcement. I'm proud to say that we've been helping people get selected for three years now. I've been getting a lot of messages about uh, people thanking us and saying that they just graduated from uh, selection and they got selected. Uh, people graduating the Q course. Uh, one of my buddies just sent me a video uh, from the Charlie committee. Yes. If you guys have ever heard of the FNG Academy, raise your hands and all their hands went up and it just filled me with pride. Um, so part of the way that we do that is making sure that you guys are physically fit and ready for selection. And the way we've been doing that for the past couple years is by sending you to a Green Beret we know and trust, Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. So if you want to get selected, you need to be in the best shape possible and you need a programmer who knows what they're talking about. So go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. Use code word BUCK to get a discount. Tell him we sent you and hook you up. Congrats to everyone who's been getting selected lately and we'll see you guys on the next one. What's up guys? Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. In this episode, we're doing a pretty dope movie. Epic. Platoon. Yeah, it's like, Dude, it's like one I of the mandatory ones. I slept on this movie, man. And I, I'm, no joke, top five favorite war films. Yeah, it definitely is like a different look, I think, than most war films. It's not uh, like, it's not like a glorifying Dude. You know, war. It's like a totally different approach to it. I really I like it. I said on this channel at one point, I was like, what's an anti-war film? I don't understand how people categorize anti-war film. Which, it makes sense now. It's like, well, anti-war makes you not want to join, and, and pro-war makes you want to join, right? It's like, uh, Act of Valor wants you to get signed up. Because I just see it as realism. But at the same time, like, this one is so anti-war. Like, this one is so... I've never seen a movie make soldiers look so bad like yeah, it's honestly, it's such cringe. a great movie but at the same time i was like it kind of pissed me off like how far in it they went showing and like the scenes like it's it's rough definitely dude, it's, it's not it's, a it's not a pick me up movie for sure but i will state though it is a different era of like you know a different type of war right because like this was a complete different scenario than what we went in you know mm -hmm. and uh so like i'm not saying it justifies anything but just like the atmosphere, just so different, you know what I mean? It like, I don't know, it's just it, this movie really kind of like shows like a really dark look into like a different environment that it's like, thank God, like I feel, this movie made me feel grateful that we were in a different, oh, different, different yeah. era of like that, you know? You Cause know, I so. don't think that the, the guys that were doing these negative things, the guys that were committing murder and all these atrocities, I don't think they're bad people. Like, I don't think they, it's, it's almost like a, an, an experiment gone horribly wrong. It's like when you put these people into these horrific conditions for so long and it just gets worse and worse and worse to the point where they're stabbing themselves and like hurting themselves uh, to try and get out of it, you, you're, you're making that person an animal. You know, you can only cage a human being so long before they start thinking that they're an actual animal and, so, and start acting like it. So it's not like I'm looking at this and saying like, oh, U.S. soldiers, those guys were scumbags. It's like, no, it's just the conditions were that bad that we, those guys became monsters. You gotta love those canteens, bro. <laughs> that selection, my guy, that's North Carolina draws right there. Just pushing through all the humidity, that overgrowth in there, like North Carolina will suck the soul right out of you. Dude, just just like everything you hate, right? The humidity, the bugs. Bugs. Uh like just, you know, just being hot as doing training. Like uh and then those canteens always make me laugh, man, because like those canteens they've been around since like i swear since like the civil war bro like those have to be the same canteens bro like they just keep reusing them reusing them and like even i remember like uh having your uh what is it bro your uh your little camelback you know mm -hmm. and you're just like you think that that'd be enough water like you know three liters worth and you just go through it so quick bro it doesn't matter just it's, it's horrible conditions man miserable yeah it sucks. I, I remember being in north carolina like in the middle of the night step like pushing through draws and then you're stepping in like knee deep water. I went swimming at one point where I thought I was gonna drown because Scuba Road was so deep that I was like guppying for a while. 
<laughs> it's like you got a rucksack on your back, and then they're talking to you like, "Hey, there's snakes everywhere." Like, it all, and all this stuff, there's snakes, there's all these animals, and, like, you're like, this, you could die out here. Like, there's been candidates that sat in, there was one candidate that sat in a uh, snake pit and got bit up and died on training. God damn, dude, what a way to go out, bro. You're like, <laughs> oh, like, bro. like you just happen to get the wrong spot. They're like, yeah. damn, bro, you f***ing me. Like, oh. <laughs> one time we were in training, and they were like, we were rucking. And the cadre is like, it's too hot. You guys need to cool off. So we go back by, uh, what is that lake? Was it Lake Muddy? Either way, there was like this little pond. And they're like, hey, you guys got to cool off. Everybody walk into the pond and then get wet. And then we'll start, we'll finish the ruck. We start walking in and they start seeing all these water moccasins. I'm out. Swimming around. I'm out, bro. <laughs> and now, like all the cadre are like, never mind. Everybody out. Everybody out. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's the middle of the day, but we're... <laughs> We're walking through this stuff in the middle of the night. Like, we don't, we can't see them. Dude, you, you even got, like, like fucking Steve Irwin's ghost going, like, hey, bro, don't, don't <laughs> yeah, do that, like, bro. Like, I wouldn't do. recommend that. Like, jeez, bro. It's terrifying, <laughs> dude. So this just brought me back to, to selection. I was like. Good memories, yeah. huh? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, take me back. Yeah. So let's get out of here. Yo, Charlie, she's f killing me in this scene, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. what is he doing with his little blanket over? He thinks he's like Harry Potter with his invisible blanket. <laughs> said Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> he's got his invisible cloak on. He's like, they can't see me. He's like, bro, what are you doing? Look at, They're look at walking how... right at you. Do something. It sucks, though, because I feel like there's somebody who would do that, though. They'd freeze because they're like, what the f*** do I do? Hell you know? yeah. But it's like, hey, bro, <laughs> you have a gun. I would use it. It's like, like it's like those kids, bro, that like they see like a, a ghost or like a demon and they're just like, Well, let me just put my blanket up. Yeah. <laughs> like they'll, they'll obviously respect it and go away. Like it's like, nah, bro, these guys ain't going nowhere, bro. Like these guys are coming full blown. It is funny because it's like you just they just like turn to the other way and they're just yeah. like <laughs> it's like no. nah, bro. Nah, these guys ain't yeah. going nowhere. Like <laughs> nah, this you think scene... you got a monster under your bed and you're just like, eh? <laughs> <laughs> he can't bypass the blanket. They're like, yeah. Yo, how many people done that to? You're like, you're like good, good thing he respects 700 threat count. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this scene, like a, it does piss you off because you're just like, like do something, doing, bro. bro. Like, do anything, literally anything. Just be like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I don't care anything. So the guys could like wake up and be like, what the hell was that? Oh. Sh there's 50 people walking up to us 10 <laughs> meters from us like this is bad and then finally someone like wakes up and sees and then hits the clackers for the you know it, it's crazy is like in small unit tactics we had a lot of these situations where it's dealing with sleep deprivation so it's it's easy to understand where they're coming from when it's like it's easy to say oh stay awake it's so hard, dude, when you're like been rucking all day long, you're exhausted. It's the middle of the night. It's quiet. Like all you hear is crickets and, and it's like you're laying down and trying to stay awake is one of the hardest things you'll ever do in your life. So to that's the one thing I won't judge when I watch this. I'm like, yeah, it's that hard to stay awake. What what would have been the like the appropriate action? Obviously, I know I'm saying alert everybody. But there's like no good way to do it where he's at, right? Because he like I feel like he was scared of like getting shot at because he was obviously so close that he's like, he's like, hey y'all, they're here, you know? They would have just no, fucking turned you wake on, you everybody know? up with you gunfire. Know? Oh, that okay. Yeah, you just, just start just, shooting. Yeah. Like I, they, you know, I don't say. That was anything. a very poe question of me, so I I take it back. <laughs> no, that's. that's a, a, <laughs> I like those questions. Like yeah. Abel used to ask those questions, and then now he's just like, uh huh. Uh -huh. uh, well, interactive people, people, huh? people don't know and they want to know like would you say like oh my god or hey guys but no you, you you pick out your most dangerous threat and you just start laying them down and open fire on them and then obviously that's going to wake everybody up and you already have your clackers set up so you have a perimeter so they set up claymores these are the claymores i'm used to um it's probably just because we used them in training i didn't get mm -hmm. like any updated like these new these new movies have like uh claymores that are detonated like remotely and all that stuff i don't know those the ones i know are these ones where it's blasting cap 
line, you feed your line, you cover up your line, and then you have your clacker in your uh, exfil or perimeter, and then your clacker, you hit it three times, bam, 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 and it goes off. Mm, okay. So then you have, I love how they did it because it's so accurate. You have a stack of clackers, and each one leads to its own individual claymore. So it's like, hey, this is the perimeter. We'll set up our claymores. Then we have to disguise it, right, so they don't just see it. So yeah, of course, we yeah. cover up with leaves, and then we, we run it through. And then uh, something you don't know is, or maybe didn't think about, is that when you have the line going from your claymore to your clacker, you don't just want to leave it one solid line, because what if someone comes through and kicks it? Oh, okay. okay. So that now you have to figure out, okay, so claymore, tree. So I'll run my my wire to the tree, wrap it around the tree a couple times, and then run it back to me. So that way, if someone kicks it, it hits the tree. It the tension hits the tree, and it doesn't rip out the blasting cap from the Dude, claymore. That would have sucked to have been like the first like uh, group of guys that had to test that theory out. Where they're just like they're like oh like oh dude he walked oh, over no. it like it's, it's yeah and they're like oh god yeah. like he just he just walked over it bro like and that it's sucks. yeah if they kick it then your line is screwed so you have to do a wrap around something. Uh, and then feed it back to yourself and then cover up your lines. In the jungle, probably a lot less important to cover up your lines. I don't think anyone's going to see it, but that's why you would have the stack of clackers. And then, uh, you know, whoever's supposed to be awake will have those so they can initiate the... How often does it happen where the dude that's supposed to be awake ends up crashing out too? Oh, it's all the time. But God, that sucks, we man. put redundancies in. So we don't have, in SF, we don't have uh, one guy by himself okay, okay it's always two guys okay that makes sense to yeah. me man. i always was curious about that because like you imagine man <laughs> just like you guys are, like that'd be the worst position to be and just be like knocked out of sleep the guy who's supposed to be up you know obviously you know it's like sometimes you can fight it off for so long and you know your body shuts down you can't you right. can't do anything about we that, always you know? did buddy teams and then that and we're gonna be right next to each other touching my leg is going to be over top of your leg so that way it's like if i get up and move or if anything happens you don't have to like say anything you could just move and i could feel your leg kick me or if you get up to try and go anywhere you wake me up um but then we could then take naps on each other so if if me and you are a buddy team and we have a three-hour watch i'll be like hey dude you get an hour and a half and then I'll get an hour and a half. So then we break that up, and it's like I I could I only have to be super diligent for that hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I was like, there's no way I could let him down. It's funny because everybody in the military, well, at least in the army, right? You have to do the fire guard. Everybody hates it, but it's like these circumstances mm -hmm. is kind of like why it's taught. So you have to like stay up during your shift. Everybody's assigned a shift, and it sucks sometimes. It'll be like, hey, your shift is from like five to six and then we got to be up by seven so you're you're just gonna lose out on sleep like yep. it's like yeah, there's no way you're just gonna knock out again and be like good to go but oh, i it hated getting yeah. that one dude, and, and it sucks because i'm like who did i piss off like what yeah. why did i get this shift you know if, you, if you're gonna wake up at seven and you get six you're cool because it's like yeah. whatever i wake you're up good. an hour early yeah. i get a full night's sleep i wake up an hour early yeah but when you have to wake up at five to six and it's up to seven <laughs> like me dude you and just <laughs> killed my hour of uh, fire guard, yeah. and then I only have an hour. I can't get a full like hour <laughs> sleep. It sucks too because the guy who has to give the schedule, he's like, "Hey, bro, I hooked you up. You got <laughs> you're like first or you. last? Yeah, bro, That's you're like, you want, hey, you last. want to cuss about like F you, bro? Yeah. <laughs> this man here is Chris. He's been resurrected. <laughs> <laughs> What an intro, bro. Only Willem Dafoe could do that, bro. <laughs> what, is that a hit? Yeah. <laughs> what, what is it? It was just William Dafoe being creepy as f***. Like, William Dafoe, he, to me, that stuck out because I was like, I've never seen Platoon. But William Dafoe is one of my favorite actors from one of my favorite movies, The Boondock Saints. Yeah. And yeah. in The Boondock Saints, he's gay and he's like, he's like, witty and he's nice and you love him and essentially going back and watching platoon i was like it's the same character yeah he's like he's very like it's very like like odd you know yeah he's I, odd I do, but you love him and i do like, like the like, character though because there is people in your units that are going to be so different than you yeah and you have to like work together right so I, this was like just like i love the dynamic of all mm -hmm. these guys because everybody's from a completely different walk of life like and that's like the military that's how it is man you're yep. just gonna have these like characters you know and they 
this movie reminded me of that. Just like random, like, and I I could even remember a few people that remind me of Willem Dafoe's character. And I'm like, oh man, that yeah. was this guy. And it was just funny because you know he'll wave like that. And you're like, yeah, this is your new like coworker, basically. You yeah. know, you're like, dope. All right, like you know. <laughs> so you never know though. You know, like you can't don't touch like, me here and we're like, cool. <laughs> like based off of like his intro, you would think this guy's just kind of an oddball and everything. But obviously throughout the movie, we see this dude's like one of the most courageous. And right. it's like it's so cool because you can never judge a book by its cover. Yep. Like. Yeah, I love Willem Dafoe's character in this. He, yeah, he's, and that's that's the just the depth that he can do as an actor is yeah, that you absolutely. could just like fall in love with him and be like, you walk in, you the first see him, and you're like, what the, <laughs> f-? yeah, dude. and then by the end of it, it's the same thing with Boondock Saints, like when he slaps his boyfriend who's like trying to kiss him and he <laughs> like slaps him in the face, <laughs> and then by the end you're like just completely in love with him because you're like do the. You're the best. Yeah, like, he's I, a boss. He's a you're boss. You're a boss, dude, and I uh, love it. So, anyway. You smoke that shit and kind of gets weird, you know what I mean? <laughs> you hear that story about the putting chemicals in the grass so we don't fight, we become pacifists? Yeah, well, don't you worry, Bunny. Jews are killing anyway, man. Yeah, but I still like a piece of once in a while. Ain't nothing like a piece of except maybe you didn't need 500. Oh, Pause. <laughs> <laughs> damn, bro. <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, <laughs> damn. <laughs> this that, that was like the perfect parody for um, Tropic Thunder. Dude, yeah. it was. Like really. I didn't realize it in the comments. You guys let us know. They're like, hey, this is Tropic Thunder's based on Platoon. Yeah. And I never watched Platoon, so when I went back and watched, I was dude, like, oh my so, gosh, it sucks because it's Tropic like, Thunder painted all over <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, bro. bro. You see that character, you're like, oh, that's, that's booty sweat. Yeah, booty sweat, <laughs> booty sweat, baby. Yeah, he's that's that dude, bro. <laughs> and then the the guy from Entourage. Yeah, dude. I feel like. Like they put a younger version of him and then dubbed his current voice over it when he started talking. I was like, oh my gosh, his voice hasn't changed at all. No. But he's like a completely different looking person. Dude, yeah, <laughs> like it. It always makes me laugh though because there is always like somebody in like the units that will be like overcompensating talking like that, you know? Yeah. And you're like, bro, like you know, I don't know. He'll make a comment like that. You're like, oh cool, you know, like whatever. Like because it's like, what do you do with that? Like somebody's talking to like saying shit like that, and it's just funny because the black guy, the first dude, he's like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna insult him. I'm gonna fucking just like get him, you know, like make him feel stupid for saying it. And I feel like that dude is just like keeps going with it. He's like, well yeah, you know, I, I get laid a lot. It's like we believe you. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, but seriously, there's there's chicks that want me. And it's like, <laughs> relax. There's always a guy in the unit like that that you're like. What's wrong with you, my boy? Like, <laughs> like, calm down. You're overcompensating right now. It's like, what the f- you know? The crazy thing like, is, like, I feel like him taking that role in Entourage was the worst decision he could have done. Because every time <laughs> I see him, I see a failing actor that can't get his shit together with a brother that's really successful. It sucks, man, because it's like he came, from, like, yeah. he came from this to do that. And it's like, dude, you're in Platoon. You're in like, Platoon you're as platoon. a main character. And now, now you're the sad older brother that's like, hey, bro, you got any jobs for me? Like, yeah. It's like, damn. He played boy. that role, but which is to his detriment. He played that role so well as being the sad, failing actor that I legitimately, all I could see him now is a failing actor. Yeah. I could go back and watch him in Platoon, and I'm like, oh, man, his career is so sad. <laughs> but it's like, why? It's only because he did such a good job in Entourage yeah. that I, I think that's him now. Why the hell would they send him alone in that hole? Yeah, I mean, definitely wouldn't be my first choice. Like, it's like, what did they expect to, like, like do with that? You know what I mean? Like, One guy by himself yeah. in a hole following a tunnel. You don't know where he's going to come out. You don't know how many people are in there. Like, why would you send him in alone? Yeah, it was, it was definitely, like, I was, I was watching the movie. I was like, eh, I don't know about yeah. that. Because I know it's like, as a, like, a platoon star, you're trying to keep anybody that could uh, amplify your force, so you're not gonna go and put them in danger, especially like that. You have no idea what's down there. It could right. be booby trapped. It could have been like I don't know. There's a lot of things, but I was like, I don't know. Maybe it's booby trap's thing, a you know? huge one. Like, like why? Why yeah. wouldn't they booby trap it? Exactly. It's an easy thing to booby yeah. trap. It's like if you're gonna create, if you're gonna dig a hole that goes to your your uh, base at your living quarters, essentially, because they're living underground, which is terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why wouldn't you booby trap? It's one way in. I would absolutely want a booby trap in there, and then I would disarm the booby trap every time I left and then rearm it every time I come back in because you have to have at least two, an entry and an exit. Right, right. Like you're not going to create a hole and then be like, that's my only way in and out because yeah, that's yeah. really f- stupid.
stupid. No. So I would booby trap both. There's no way I wouldn't have a booby trap. And then there's no way any army personnel would ever send two is one, one is none. I mean, that's, that's the motto. That's like, that's an unbreakable rule. You don't go anywhere by yourself. And and I would also say, too, usually if it was going to be somebody, it would be the new dude, right? Because it's like you're not going to send the guy who's already seen it. It's going to be the point. new dude. Yeah. And so it kind of made me laugh because I'm like, yeah, there's no way. He would, like, I feel like that character would have been like, oh, no, it's not my turn. Oh, boy just got here. Like, it's his yeah. turn, you know? But I, I don't know. Even as a pogue. I, that's not the first reaction I would get. Like, dude, there's a tunnel. Like, hey, let's go check it out, my yeah. boy. Like, nah, bro. Like, we're not mole rats. Like, we're not. <laughs> we're not going underground, bro. Like, and then he goes like, in and then comes yeah. in contact. Just pulls out his pistol, starts clapping him. Like, yeah, bah, bah, bah. I was like, yeah, you, you're gangster, bro. But this is a really stupid plan. Yeah, like, uh, it would have been my first choice for sure. <laughs> no, but like, like uh, my <laughs> notes for this was just like that. Yeah, dude. Like, if I come up to a hole and they're like, get in there. I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. How about we just. <laughs> put dirt in the hole so nobody could get back out of it that's i guess that's like my first thought approach because like what are we expecting to find in there or like or is our i don't know if they were like thinking like this will lead us to their central location but even then it's like you're going in there blind you have right. no idea what's going to be waiting for you. i don't know you have it was 50, weird. It was you have a, how many guys like i don't know 20 let's say 20 people yeah you're going to send one of them to go through this tunneling system how about we keep that one guy or either send two and then wait for him to return tell him hey don't go farther than this. We need some kind of plan. Yeah. Don't be gone longer than this. Agatwa. Where are you going? Others going with you. Time your return. What to do if you don't return, right? Yeah. yeah. You have to send Agatwa. Like, all right, if you're going to be gone longer than 10 minutes, then we're going to send another buddy team a- after you. You got to love uh, Willem Dafoe's positivity, little bro, because he's like, I'm out, bro. Yeah. <laughs> he just like goes south of the like, flashlight. Like, like you, dude, you would never cool. catch my ass doing that, bro. Like, I would be like, uh, okay, so how far you want me to go? Yeah. Like, how many meters? And like, I'd be having like those little like uh, clickers, like, okay, already went down four, 40 feet. All right, I'm back, you know? Yeah. But uh, this dude was more than willing, bro. He was like, yeah, see ya, you know? You would send a couple guys, you would hit a gotwa, but if, if it was me running this mission, I'd be like, I got 20 guys. We probably got shovels, I imagine. That we got uh, tr- entrenching tools. Hey, start digging, boys. <laughs> Let's bury this thing so whoever's in there is stuck. And then if we could find the exit, then we could either kill them trying to get out, like yeah. like trying to trap a rat. Right, right. That makes sense. Right? Or You're bury the other them? side, you know. But yeah. sending a guy in to be a mole rat, that's crazy. <laughs> Dude, it's such a serious scene, and then the dumbass from Scrubs. Forget about us, huh? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, like, it was it was like a weird, but I think it was trying to show like how like he's like not accepting what's going on. He's like disassociating, you know? Because it did it did throw me off, bro. When I seen it, I was like, it's like a it's like cigarette hanging out of his mouth. It was it was like a it was like a stage play. Yeah. It's like are we in fucking New York City? He's like, Forget about us, huh? Let's go. He's like, we're gonna get in here, you shake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna work out with your decisions, eh? We're gonna walk out right now. Yeah, it was like, what but I think fuck? that that that's what I think he was trying to show is like he's like just disassociating because it's getting so crazy. He's You're giving like, him a lot of credit. You know. I think he's trying to show that he sucks at acting. <laughs> don't do my boy from scrubs that way this is a, a certified doctor in scrubs he becomes one of the the head resident guy of like the er he's got like, a no. phd bro you can't talk to him like that but it, i it, this is insane like charlie sheen just starting to lose it but then he finds he finds that board in the the context is that they're finding their guys literally tied to trees yeah mutilated mutilated, mutilated yeah. so like there's that hatred in there there's that anger and you don't know who the enemy is so when you see somebody and they're a military age male this happened in afghanistan all the time it was like you see military age males they know you're coming if if you find them like they stuck around for a reason they stuck around to do war yeah. whether it's to move ammunition to move food, to you know, to be a, a a gopher, to get intel. If they know you're coming as Americans and you're here to f- it up, and they stuck around, it's for a reason, and that reason's not good for us. That because all military age males is like, if you're not involved in this, you know, like, hey, the Americans are coming. We're at war right now. It's a bad situation. They, I know they're coming for me. I'll catch you guys on the flip side. I'll be back in you know when this ends or whatever. Like. You just know to get out of there. So 
I'm not justifying what he did. Obviously, it's a horrible because it's like this guy's like one it's leg one eye, blind. One he's obviously uh, not like the one. Like, eye. He's not the most tactical threat, like right. you know, in or, or in that area. Yeah, but it shows that like the you know, there's just there. Charlie Sheen's like going all the way to the edge, and then he has this moment where he's like he's so scared and angry at what happened to his soldiers but then he finds that line and he's shooting at the guy's feet and he finds that line and says I, all i have to do is aim at his chest and i can cross it but he realizes in that moment it's like it's not worth it right and that's where he was like okay i need to keep my humanity <laughs> So, worst case scenario, like you're already getting ambushed, and then you call in a mortar fire, and it's on your position. Yeah. Was... And then the mortars they're using must be the Willie Pete's because it's burning the shit out of his side, with the part that hits him. And Willie Pete's uh, white phosphorus. I don't know if that's what they're using, but we've had I've had white phosphorus shot at us, and it's it's horrifying because whatever it hits, it just starts burning immediately. We had like a I watched a round hit a um, generator, and it just, like, starts melting it down. It just burns. Insane. So as it lands and explodes, it starts burning everything. Does, so, it, is it, does it look like uh, like Alien, like that acid where it just keeps, like, eating through everything? That's just, like, it's just white light. Jesus. Hey, so that he probably got some of that Willie Pete on him, that white phosphor on him, and it's just burning his skin. Nah, and then he a, goes to grab that? it to try and, like, put it out, and then he starts burning so it's just brutal. Yeah. So to call in a fire fire mission and have it land on your position is like, like can we get any more? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. You know, you're like talking sucks. about like this, uh, like what they're using. And everybody thinks like, oh, like we have the Geneva Convention. So like all that like messed up stuff is just out, you know. And I even thought that too for a long time. But then I started like reading. It's like, no, these guys, they're like, you still got like napalm, mm -hmm. phosphorus and stuff. And it's like, that's pretty rough too, you know. Oh, and yeah. everybody just thinks like, well, no, the Geneva Convention is like, now it's like peaceful. So, you know, it's like, it's a, it's like a, it's weird. It's like, it's like you're trying to go and be like safe during yeah. war. It's right. Like, it's like, Geneva it's a, such a weird you know, idea. Stupid. You know, even to the point where it's like, well, you need to use certain rounds and, uh, and some rounds aren't authorized because the cavities they cause are too big. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, what? Yeah, it's just funny because it's like there's like regulations to war. Which yeah, is like, like don't kill the them too much. Idea, like, you just want to you know? kill them a little bit. You don't yeah. want to full kill. <laughs> Bruh. Bro, this movie just like dies in so killing your own guys killing murdering innocent civilians yeah like they hold they didn't hold back at all this, on this anything. is this is like the extreme of like just wilding out with nobody like overseeing what's going on yeah. like which is crazy because like and that's the only thing that kind of got me mad about this movie because it's like there's always well, I'm somebody glad I'm not the only those, one because like, I got mad too no I got I got pissed off because it's yeah. like dude like I would and I'm not saying this to hype anybody up or myself or anything. It's just I feel like there's enough people with like the 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 right moral compass and integrity that would never allow that stuff to happen, right. or they would die trying to prevent it because that's the way that they would want to go out. You know what I mean? I, I know I could speak for myself and other soldiers in my unit that would like if somebody was doing stuff like that, they would report it and they like or stop it like it, while it's happening. There's no way that all these guys would just be so timid. But then it's like, I can't speak for this era. Like, right. you know, and obviously Sergeant Barnes, everybody's scared of him because this dude looks like he's been through hell and back, you know? But it just pisses me off because it's like, it's almost like the worst atrocities that ever happened. It's all like, put in one movie. Yeah, in one movie. And it's like, and like, I feel like it's getting portrayed like, oh, this is the norm. It's like, hell no, dude. Yeah. Like, like, like you know, it's like, this isn't the norm, like, we don't, for a unit. Like, this isn't- We're not like, going around killing each other. You know? civilians yeah. murdering they like, make it they make it look like we're just a bunch of vikings like yeah. just going out it's like no nah, dude like everybody has principles too like mm -hmm. we're you know people are human too but i think the director was really trying to like push the whole like you know being too uh here in this environment too long they lost like their humanity and their yeah. care for like people and then this guy he like uh, uh completes the, the the cardinal sin of like 
fratricide, which is like crazy because it's like he was doing everything to protect his unit, mm. and then he ends up taking out his own guy, which is one of his like most like uh, like one of the most important guys in the unit, where he gives people kind of like uh, lifted in in spirit and like the morale, you know. And it's like mm-hmm. you took this guy out yourself just because he was trying to stop you from doing something terrible. Yeah, That's which crazy. you know you're wrong. Yeah, and he's you're trying wrong. to stop you from scalping people and murdering civilians. And, and it sucks because Sergeant Barnes starts off like he's like a good patriot, but then you start seeing little signs, man. He doesn't really care about like like the mental state of his soldiers, which is a red flag, right? Like mm-hmm. it's not just keeping them alive, it's keeping them alive like morally too, right? Yeah. And then even like with the just the morale and stuff like that, he didn't care about like, <laughs> you know, any of that stuff. He was just like, oh, we got business to do and that's it, you know? And so you kind of start seeing like, he's just all about trying to win and that's mm-hmm. it, you know? But that's what broke my heart about this whole thing, man. I was like, man, you know, no way. All right, guys. Hope you enjoy that episode. This was a banger. I think. I think yeah. as, as much as I hate the the sentiment that they kind of put into this movie, it's it's also like eye opening and and it's yeah. it's part of our history. No, I mean I I welcome the different perspective. Right. though, You know, it's always good to have. You know, and it's, it, at the end of the day, it's an amazing movie. Yeah, it, and I mean, the star studded yeah. cast, dude, like it's crazy, insane, such a great movie. Uh, and obviously, we've already expressed the things that we didn't like about it, yeah. but. Hope you enjoy that episode. If you guys got this far, well, damn, you're fans of the channel. We appreciate you. Make sure you drop a comment down below letting us know what movies you would like to see on the channel that you haven't seen, uh, what you thought about this movie, what we got wrong. If anything was, like, blaringly obvious, don't think that it's, like, disrespectful to us to be like, hey, you guys messed this up. Uh, we, we welcome that because it just helps us learn, and we're learning with you along this process, and it makes it funner for you know, movies in the future is like, oh, remember that movie that we did before? Yeah, yeah. They corrected us and, and that's, you yeah. know, now we know so we don't keep messing it up. So drop a comment, hit the like button. It helps a lot, helps move the, the videos up in the algorithm so more people see them. We can get a bigger audience and we can keep these things going. And then you never know, maybe one day we we pay him. <laughs> See, if, that see what's nice? my worth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's gonna be like twenty that. bucks, like maybe lunch or dinner, but it won't be a lot. But I mean, God. Well, I'm another one of those shirts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. Hey, these shirts cost a lot, so yeah. just gotta you gotta fund me, bro. <laughs> we'll start a GoFundMe account bro. for Ruben's fucking <laughs> stupid T-shirts. Hey, bro, it's crazy because 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 Buck is is asking me to bring these. I don't want to do this, but you know what I mean. You gotta help him out. I wouldn't even know what to call it. Like, hey, can you bring a crazy fucking button up that? Dude, where else hat, would you find? Yo, you, you guys might Batman not be able to see it. Joker, Joker on surfboards. Like it's, dude, this I had a copy. The Joker surfing. Yeah, dude. <laughs> with flowers on it. Yeah, I am dude. so confused by everything that's going on. Dude. I don't hate it, but it it's. <laughs> you said I don't hate it. Bro. Yeah, I'm confused, but it's a vibe, bro. Yeah, dude. You guys got to keep me supported so I can get more of these shirts, bro. <laughs> we'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.